So like I normally do, here's another uh, series of mailbag. So these are questions and comments that you guys leave on the channel, some of which are worthy of pulling up and running to video so other people get to see or hear what my response to you is. Um, most of these, in fact all of these, have been responded to individually, so the people who raised the query have already had their response. This is me just sort of catching them up. So the first one is uh, from Tyrone Boon, and he says, uh, any P3 review yet? Um, no, quite honestly. Uh, response to a video I did, on it, that was a Sunday morning rant back in November 2017, so God, a good 18 months ago. And um, what I've been trying to do, I've been trying to do sort of a piano off uh, video, and I am just haven't had the time to sit down and properly put it together. I've, I started several times and I've, I've run into one, one problem or another. Um, normally relating to time, I might add, <laughs> which is sort of a limiting factor for me at the moment. Um, anyway, the P3 itself is not a bad module. I mean, you can pick them up second hand for under $50 um, on the internet when you see them come up. They don't come up very often, though. That's the thing. They're quite a rare unit. Um, and it basically does what it says on the tin. Now, there were a series of ROM cards that were issued for the P3, and I have very little details. I mean, I haven't done too much research on it, but I've, I really have found very little detail on, the, on these ROM cards and how many of them were, whether it was just Korg that made them, whether other manufacturers got into the mix like they did with the, with the, the M1. So um, I'm hoping at some point I will come across a catalog, a Korg catalog where the P3 is mentioned, and then I can get some more information about the P3. Because a lot of, you know, I did a video a couple of weeks back about marketing material. Marketing material is great because what marketing material does is it tells you all the stuff that either they have issued for the particular item or all the stuff that's the pipeline for the particular item. So, you know, hopefully if I find a P3 brochure, which probably will be scarce, I would have thought by now, um, then I might actually find out how many cards and what cards were issued. I do have one card for the P3, um, but that's it. The next one comes from Corleone Don, obviously the godfather. Um, <laughs> he writes, pure waffle dude. Well, you know, that's what the rant's all about. So this was in response to the... Um, the rant I did on the EMU SP1200 rumours that we've now confirmed are not rumours anymore. Isla Instruments is making um, an SP12, SP2400 and that is going to be the upgraded version effectively of this SP1200. So we will wait um, for that to arrive, but it's not going to arrive, I can tell you now, until the end of the year. Because um, Brad's already told me that. Or he's told everybody that, shall I say. Um, so, um, you know what? The rant is the rant, right? And it's for me just to waffle, rant, whatever. Um, they're all my views. Uh, I don't get paid for any of this stuff. I've got no no allegiances to any of the manufacturers, so I'm quite entitled to say it's rubbish, um, if I think it's rubbish. Uh, and some stuff, I must admit, I've looked at recently and thought is rubbish, but I haven't actually put those to camera yet. Um, but it is what it is. So you either watch the rants and like them, or you don't watch the rants and don't like them, it's entirely up to you. But I am being respectful to the Godfather. Okay, this is from a, a, a guy who's uh, made left many comments on the channel. Uh, come, he said, calls himself Yo Casa Yo Carda, um, but real name is, Ro is Ross. So uh, Ross writes. Unless you fancy up waking up with another MK20 on your doorstep, I'd pr pr probably recommend leaving the iPad at home when you head to the pub next time. So <laughs> this is in response to the uh, video I did a couple of weeks ago where I talked about the um, the P330 turning up because that was a bit of a drunk bid one night. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't help it. I'm sort of, you know, it's, the, it's one of those things and I agree with you. I kind of agree with you, but hey-ho. Anyway, two questions here. 
perhaps a very rudimentary question, but what brand of choice for standard audio jacks in your studio? Well, I use, um, I tried, well, basically I've tried lots of brands of cables over the years. Um, so I've bought pre prepackaged cables, um, and quite often, you know, a lot of those prepackaged cables have been, I've been somewhere, I've needed something, I've just gone and bought it quickly. Um, but most of them are rubbish, to be honest. Most most of the cables you buy, or I've, I've found most of the cables you can buy in, in the shops are, are rubbish, especially if you're a guitarist, because a guitarist is always on the strain relief, and they always go. I've also got, I also went through a, quite a big phase of, of building my own cables, which was incredibly time consuming. Um, and to be honest, I didn't, you know, even though I could repair them and what have you, because I built them, it just became painful in the end, so I stopped doing that. And I think I've pretty much removed all of those from the studio now. So now what I do is I tend to buy my cables from a company called Studio Spares. And uh, the reason why I buy them from this company is because they ain't bad quality. Um, and they tend to last quite a while um, in terms of moving things out. So they do very good quality cables. Now there are some Studio Spares cables. As you can see, they all have little red dots on them, but the red, little red, I have to be honest, these little red things here tend to fall off. You can see that, that, that thing there. They tend to fall off because there's one fallen off. So you end up in the studio quite often, sort of like walking over sort of these little red sticker things. Um, they do various lengths. Um, I think these are two meter. Well, it looks like, yeah, they're two meter. Um, for linking things together. Um, I always buy Studio Spare's own brand. I don't buy um, anybody else's. It's good quality. The price ain't bad. Um, and to I, I have I've very rarely had to go and replace any of their cables I've put in so far. So that's the last six years. So they do audio cables. They do MIDI cables. There you go. There's a MIDI cable. Um, that I guess it's probably a three meter MIDI cable. They do them in various different colours. Oops. Okay, there's a red one. So I tend to color code the cables in the in the studio for various different purposes. Um, red ones don't go. The red ones are the really long ones. I use these quite often when I'm actually doing videos because it allows me to set up somewhere else and run the MIDI back to where I'm uh, running the sound source or running the sound source. So. That's the first thing. I use Studio Spares, www.studiospares.com. Um, or if you want to go and visit them, I'm sure they'd be happy to see you. Um, I think they're based in Milton Keynes. They used to be in North London. They used to have a showroom in North London. They used to be able to go down there, but they moved um, recently. I want to say they're either in Milton Keynes or Bedford. Um, but they're that, that sort of area, yeah, north of London. Um, and the second question he writes is, as a fellow Roland D-series LA synthesis nut, yeah, um, <laughs> have you ever considered picking up a JD-990? Um, uh, the difference between the original JD-800 and the rack mount seems pretty considerable. The 990 wiki page lists the different difference is pretty clear but one of the major pulls of the 800 is hands on real time and immediacy of the sliders functions on the interface have you ever owned either of these now i have to be honest and say i've never owned um either a jd 800 or a jd 999 i have bid on a jd 800 on more than one occasion um they kind of a good one kind of is in the 800 to a grand range um, second hand so you know these these things are quite pricey um, I have seen them cheaper and I've seen I've seen rubbish ones um, you know with various things broken on them and to be honest with the number of sliders on this thing um, how do I put it the number of sliders on this thing mean that you know you really want to be looking for a good one that's been well repaired or well serviced or well repaired if it has been repaired uh, because the sliders, there's so many sliders on this thing, and they're so they're not easy to get hold of that you will rue the day if you buy a bad one. Um, so, 
I sort of kind of I kind of like the whole idea of the 800. I like the fact that you've got everything. I mean, I've said before on the channel, I'm a buttons, I'm a I'm a tactile uh, guy. I love to sort of play the buttons up and down, um, use the sliders real time, play with the sound, um, morph the sound into something I'm I'm looking for. I, I really like that concept, um, and I think it. I think the 800 really was sort of a I suppose it was a D50 with it, with the programmer already on it because if you remember the D50 had, had the PG PG1000 and that had all the sliders on it. you can change the change the change the um, the soundscape and it's really the reason why the the DT I like the DT7 for the Yamaha as well because you can morph the sound on on the DT7 and send it back to the Yamaha I like those features the fact that you can morph and morph and play and the 800 was like that now the 900 is a rack mount and or the 990 should i say and goes for the same price bracket but the 900 is a better machine than the 800 but they both have they have quirks and um they have plus points and minus points so the 900 being a rack mount you don't get all the um sliders and, and controls that you would have on the 800 so you can't really play with this thing real time and in fact i think you need a programmer for the 900 to really get the best out of the 900 and i'm not sure which one of the programmers if there is one you need to get for the 900. Um, i i mean i've just done tertiary research on the 990 and i haven't really seen anything that's jumped out to me to say this is the programmer for the 990 but it sort of seems to me that you need the programmer for the 990 to really get the get under the bonnet of the 990 like the, the like the 80 the the 800 but on the flip side the 990 has first of all it has a series of rom cards available to it which Roland published i don't know whether any other manufacturers published rom cards for the 990 possibly they did and again, this is sort of one of those areas where you probably just have to set up an eBay search and look for stuff. Um, uh, but it also allows you to to modify the sounds and sound those, save those sounds out. So, in terms of playability, the 800 is a better machine. In terms of actual functionality, the 990 is definitely a better machine. I think you need to think about. Um, what it is you're trying to do with this thing. If, you, if you're looking to put it in a rack because you have limited studio space, probably the 990 is the way to go with that if that's the sound you want. What I would say though is if you're thinking about dropping a grand on one of these machines, go look at the Roland JV range. Um, you can get a lot of synthesizer for a grand in the, in the JV range. And I don't think you'd be too upset with that. Um, I have in the studio I have a 5080 and I have a 2080 in the JV range both um, modules I might add and I have to be honest and say there ain't a lot of sounds you can't generate with those two particular modules especially with the plug-in cards that you can buy so that's my take on the JD 800 and JD 990 JD of course stands for my initials Remember, hit that like button if you like what you saw. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified about more rants, more mailbag, more questions and answers, and more videos about this sort of stuff when it's loaded to the channel. Until next time, bye-bye.